This episode was proudly made possible by the all-new 2015 Subaru Legacy. It's not just a sedan, it's a Subaru. But Julian, what does the spleen even do? I don't know, dude, but science made an artificial one and it's better in every way. What? I love it! Hey everybody, Trace and Julian here for D News, and I know what the spleen does. I totally learned it like 20 minutes ago. The spleen filters things. I thought the the kidneys filtered things. Yes, the kidneys also filter things, like your blood for your metabolism's waste products, but the spleen removes pathogens that are covered in antibodies, kind of like a large lymph node. Oh, so that's not working. Correct, bad news. When there is an infection the spleen can't handle, antibiotics are needed. But half the time doctors can't identify the pathogen and they use a broad spectrum antibiotic, which we know is bad. It's not as effective, and it has the downside of making microbes more resistant to treatment. Right, but doctors have no choice if they're racing against sepsis, which is when the immune system freaks out, leading to inflammation, blood clotting, and usually death. Uh, pop quiz, Trace. What does the word sepsis come from? Uh, my Greek is a little rusty, but I think it's a sepian, which means to make rotten. Also, where words like antiseptic and septic tank come from. Yep. So, sepsis is kind of like a person going rotten. Ooh, mm. I don't like that at all. But fear not, because it's science to the rescue, everyone. Researchers have developed an artificial spleen that performs that same filtering function, but better. But how does it work? Well, instead of attaching antibodies to the pathogens and then filtering those out, the biospleen... Awesome name. Totally. ...attaches menace-binding lectins, or carbohydrate-binding proteins, to sugars on the surface of the troublemakers. And the MBL come prepackaged with magnetic nanobeads. When you pass everything over a magnet, it sucks the viruses, bacteria, and fungi, and toxins right out of there. Sucking magnets, how do they work? That's a whole other video thing. The biospleen has been tested on rats who were infected with E. coli and S. aureus, bacteria that can cause sepsis in humans. Five hours after infection, 89% of the treated rats were still alive, while just 14% of the control rats made it. I feel really bad for the rats. They also injected the rats with toxic bacterial waste to induce endotoxemic shock. And the survival rates, though, they were exactly the same. Cool. Now, this biospleen has been used on human blood, too, though not while it was inside people, obviously. And it removed 90% of pathogens after five rounds of cleansing. From there, the human immune system can just mop up the rest. Sounds pretty easy. But the problem is, your average person has five liters of blood, and the biospleen filters only a liter every hour. So five rounds, that's gonna take, like, over a day. Right, but you could stack biospleens and have multiple going at once, cutting down on filtration time. This could also be a useful new treatment for viral infections like HIV and Ebola, though it hasn't been tested on viruses yet. The researchers are now testing the biospleen on pigs and hope to reach clinical trials in a couple of years. I'm really glad we got to say spleen so much. It's the funniest organ name. I, I think it's really good. My favorite, though, is kidney. <laughs> Something about the, the, you know, that hard K the sound. Hard K sound. The hard K sound. Exactly. Right. Let us know what you think about the research down below in the comments. You can also come find me, jhug00, on Twitter. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye. Bye. I still don't really get the spleen. Spleen? Can I get still it removed? Can't.